Sarah and I'm a summer intern at the House Divided Project. Today I'm going to show you how to use Erasma, an augmented reality program that we use at our own studio here at Dickinson College. Augmented reality is a really exciting new technology that can bring still images to life in both classroom and public history contexts. Visitors access Erasma through an app, but today we're going to show you how simple it is to create original Erasma content on the computer. So we'll start on the Erasmus Studio login page at studio.erasmus.com slash login. You'll need to make an account, but it's free and easy to do. We're going to just go ahead and log in under the House Divided account for now so that we can show you how to create new content. So here we are on the home page of the Erasmus Studio website, where you can see popular public auras created by other accounts, as well as our own account information. We'll go check out the content we've already created under My Auras. Put simply, an Aura is a specific image that can unlock additional digital content when a visitor uses the Erasma app. For example, a visitor could point their camera at this image of Henry Williams Bradley in our studio, or even a printout of the same image, and a student documentary about researching Spradley's story will pop up, pop up on their screen. These are all Auras that we've created for the new House Divided Project Studio, but we'll show you how to create your own new Auras by going to Create New Aura up here at the top. At this point, you'll see that the Erasmus Studio actually shows you the three major steps for creating an aura. First, you'll need a trigger image, which is the picture that activates the aura. It's recognizable by the app and results in the overlay image. Next, we'll upload this overlay image, or that additional digital content that we've selected to appear. And then finally, we'll finish the aura by naming it and making it available to the public. So starting with the trigger image, our first step is to either click to upload a new trigger image or click to select an existing image that we've already uploaded to the site. We're going to click to upload a new trigger image and then go to browse, select the picture we want, uh, which is a picture of Abraham Lincoln and the blind memorandum that we've been using in our studio, hit open and then save. Once this image processes, we'll have to make it recognizable to the app, and we can do that by drawing shapes around recognizable features. In some cases, it works best to use a lot of small rectangles. And these shapes you can delete by going to this delete button and then selecting the shape you'd like to delete, or select to move it around wherever you'd like. We've also found that um, it can be helpful to draw an ellipse around the face of a subject in a portrait. Oftentimes, it's a combination of these shapes that works best, so you'll just have to experiment and figure out what works best for each image. It's really just a process of trial and error. So this looks good, so we'll hit Next. At this point, we're going to upload the overlay. We want to click to select an existing overlay because we want this video of Professor Pinsker talking about the blind memorandum. We'll hit Select. And here it is on top of our image. We can zoom out, and this looks kind of small, so we're going to want to resize it. When you hold down the shift key on your keyboard and then drag the image out, it will make it larger while maintaining its proportions. We also want visitors to be able to tap on this video and take them to even more content, specifically this page on the blind memorandum that we've created for our Lincoln's writing site. So we'll copy the URL and then go back to the studio. We'll hit Add Actions and then go up and to a new action so that when the overlay is tapped, it will load a URL. And then we'll hit paste and save. Now you'll see that we have a new action. When the overlay is tapped, it will load the URL and take visitors to the page on the blind memorandum. We can go ahead and hit next. As you can see, we're in step three or the final step of creating your aura. We need to name the aura, so let's call it test and then add a hashtag so that people can find it. We like to use House Divided. And then we can hit Save. Now the Aura is saved under My Auras, but it's still not available to the public. To make the Aura available to the public, you need to hit Share. So we can go ahead and do that. And we're done. That's how simple it is to create new content. Thank you for watching this tutorial on how to use the Erasmus Studio platform.